Okay, so welcome back. In this video, we'll continue what we have just done. We'll take the variance of the corner density estimator from the previous video and the bias from the previous section. And we combine these to get the mean squared error. And in particular, we are interested to learn what does the mean squared error do for small bandwidth. And we have just seen we can't choose it too small as the variance get to, gets too large. So we need to think what is the optimal bandwidth. So we are going to prepare for that. Okay, so mean squared error. The mean squared error you possibly know from statistics. So for a general estimator theta hat, there is the definition. It's the expectation of theta hat minus the truth squared always putting random data from the model in here as we have been doing it. Or there is the alternative way of writing it. It's the variance of theta hat plus the bias of theta hat squared. And that's the form I'm going to use here. We have just worked out the variance. We know the bias from last lecture, so that will be an easy job. Good, so let's just do that. Here mean squared error of f Head h of x, that's our estimator, is variance plus bias. The variance is 1 over nh roughness times f of x. So 1 over nh roughness of k f of little x. And the bias squared, we just spoke about the bias in the previous video, or rather we spoke about the expectation of this. We still need to subtract the truth to get the bias. So we need to subtract this f of x to get the truth. And then the bias is this term. So one half h squared mu. So one half h squared mu two of k f double prime of x. And that we still need to square because we need the bias squared. Good, and we have done a similar thing here in the previous video. Only now this f, or rather that f, has been subtracted away. So now the leading term is a bit different. Namely, it's now this squared. So what we get here is, well, first term we can't do anything, nh roughness of k f of x. And then we just get one quarter h to the four second moment squared and second derivative also squared. And that's again true as h goes to zero and there will be error terms, but the error terms in the variance will be negligible with respect to that one and the error terms for the bias will be negligible with respect to this. Good, so let's look a bit at the error term. So for the variance we wrote one over n and then we had one over h f of x roughness of k minus f of x squared. That's the term I wrote here at the time I just see I forgot the square. And then we have this term, which I never quite wrote, but which has an h square and another term which has an h to the 4. And you can guess if we had included more terms here, then we would also get h to the 6. And so we will not get any odd h terms because they all cancel because the kernels are symmetric. So we get something times h squared plus something times h to the 4 and so on. But we had a second approximation here that was also Taylor approximation. And if you check this carefully here, we had one over h, we got also every other term. So here we would get as the next term something times h plus something times h to the three and so on. So in fact, for the variance, we get all orders of h. So the leading term, that is this one, we have one over h. The next term I have written here is constant. And then here we have a term which is proportional to h, h squared, h to the three, h to the four. So something times h plus something times h squared and so on. Good, and then for the bias, it's a bit different. Namely, first there's no n in the bias, so we get one half second moment f double prime times h squared plus now we didn't do more terms but i argued the first term cancelled because the corner is symmetric and same logic the third term which we didn't do will cancel so the next term which actually will contribute is the fourth term and well and so on the even even one so 
h to the 6 will be the next one. And we need to add the bias squared. So h to the 4 is the smallest term. And then we have mixed terms. For example, we will have one term, which is 2 times this times that. So we get an h to the 6 term and so on. So we get h to the 6, h to the 8 and so on. So here we get all even terms starting with 4. Good. So mean squared error is the variance plus bias squared. So we need to now deal with these terms which come from the variance which have 1 over n and then the dominating term has order 1 over h and they have all orders of h and the terms which come from bias square which have no n and start with h to the 4. So the pattern is mean squared error is let's not worry about the coefficients now so we have from the variance 1 over n and then something times 1 over h plus something constant plus something times h plus something times h squared. And from the bias squared, we have something times h to the 4 plus something times h to the 6, h to the 8, and so on. And the question is now, what are the dominating terms here? And the claim is what I've written is that it's this one and that one. Well, and that is actually clear, I would argue, namely, the terms here, all of them have higher powers of h than this one. So if h goes to zero, this will grow, this will stay, that goes small, goes small faster. So all of these terms can be dominated by that one. And similarly here, the terms down here have higher powers of h, so every term here can be dominated by that one. So it's not actually a problem. All the terms in the lower row get negligible compared to the first term in the lower row as h goes small, and all the terms in the upper row get negligible compared to the first term in the upper row again as h goes to infinity. There's no limit of n involved here. That's for fixed n, but of course when being negligible starts, that may depend on n. There's a bit of notation which people sometimes use. So people sometimes write mean squared error is just writing the dominant term. So it's 1 over n times h, whatever is here. And then the other dominant term, and then they write little o of 1 over n h, which is kind of standard notation for terms which still go to 0 even if divided by this. So they go to 0 faster than that, which is an attempt to describe these terms. And then plus little o of h to the 4, which stands for terms which go faster to 0 than that one. They still go to 0 if I divide by h to the 4. And I have to admit I'm not 100% happy with this notation because this one here is a bit misleading, I think, in there is no limit of n involved really. So that here would in my eyes only make sense if n h goes to infinity or a limit like this, but we for that do not actually need this limit. But whatever, that's what many people wrote, and I wrote that kind of as a comment also in the notes. Okay, so that tells us what the mean squared error is. And what's left to do now is we look at this expression as a function of h, the bandwidth, and then we just find the h which minimizes the expression. So we find the optimal h, the one which minimizes the error. But we'll do that in the next video. So see you very soon.